Welcome to the Writer's Way Podcast, where we celebrate writers who have completed their books and inspire writers who haven't. Join Lori and her guests as they talk about writing, books, and life in between chapters. Sponsored by the I Can Handle It, I'm the Teacher t-shirt. Find it at LoriWriter.com. Hello and welcome to the Writer's Way podcast. I'm here with the marvelous Andrea, aka Andy Can. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you so much for coming on this with with me. I appreciate it. We had to switch programs. I'm really hoping both of us will be on the recording. Right? Me too. Me too. Okay, so Andrea, start off and tell everybody um, your history, your bio, you know, what were you before you were an author? Wow, okay. (laughs) Well, um, I had a very busy and varied career. Um, Spent a lot of time um, in sales and selling technology and then um, spent some time in architecture as a director of marketing and then owned my own marketing company. And then I went into healthcare and be, I became a, um, uh, a, a sort of an advisor and, and a consultant, an internal consultant for telemedicine. So really kind of not your typical author path. Um, I'm actually a professor at Arizona State University teaching healthcare innovation and technology. So it's, um, it's a little bit not what most people would expect yeah. <laughs> from a children's author Um, but there's this other side to me besides the analytical side that is creative and um, love loves loved being a mom I have my kids are grown now Um, they're both my son in one semester will be graduated from college and my daughter will be graduated with her master's degree so so it feels really good Um, and I started the first uh, I wrote, when my kids were little, I wrote my first book. I mean, I've been writing since I was a little kid. I love writing and reading, and Nancy Drew was, like, my inspiration. I read them all, like, four times each, and, and, um, anyway, oh. my dog is, uh, I was just gonna say, let's just tell people what you're doing. There's a yeah, my, if I look weird, it's because my dog's like, <laughs> play with me. Anyway, um, so, Um, when I was, when my kids were little, I made up a story, um, called Mr. Hoopy Loops and his amazing glass. And I've always had a really keen interest in the arts. So this is my dog. (laughs) He's very excited about being on a podcast. Look at the screen. Look at the screen. (laughs) Hi, my name's Bo. Okay. You need to get down. (laughs) Anyway. Um, so, um, we, uh, I wrote the story or, and, uh, about to, and I told it to my kids because I was really interested in art. I participated in a lot of um, teaching of art to students in my kids' schools um, just as a, as a hobby and as a volunteer. And so I really loved Chihuly Glass and there was a, um, a Phoenix Art Museum uh, uh, sort of display and, and large um, installation. And so I made up the story about a man who's a glassblower. And I, coincidentally, I grew up in Ohio um, in the Toledo area where um, glass um, is one of the primary industries. So my dad worked in the glass industry. Um, I grew up at Cedar, going to Cedar Point as a kid, which is a, um, it's like a amusement park and they have glass blowers there. So I don't, almost didn't even realize how much it was in my DNA, this glass thing. So, yeah. but I wrote this book and every year my, my daughter's like, mommy, you're an author, you know, and then as she got older and she's like, you know, cause you wrote a kid's book. And it's sort of like, I felt kind of a little guilty, almost like, oh my gosh, I fooled her. <laughs> cause it's not really published, it's just sort of written down. Yeah. Um, and so every year it was on my to-do list, you know, publish that book. and. Um, Finally, about a year and a half ago, I was looking at options to publish a textbook, and I stumbled upon self-publishing, indie publishing, and I, it was like this wondrous um, place, you know, like, wow, I can, um, I can, um, you know, create things and, and publish them, and people might actually buy them. This is like a miracle. (laughs) (laughs) That's what I found. What? I know. (laughs) Well, and, and, you know, there was always 
for years because, um, you know, and I had actually over the years off and on, I would say, okay, that's it. I'm going to be a writer. And I actually had put some inquiries into publishers for different kinds of books. And I even had some successful queries, but then I'd be like, no, you know, for a variety of reasons, mostly because, you know, I had a pretty, um, you know, lucrative career that was very technical that I enjoyed. And, mm -hmm. and I thought this is too risky. Um, and, and anyway, so bottom line is I fell in love with it. And um, Mr. Hoopy Loops and his amazing glass, this is my first one. And it's um, won four awards actually. And it has been up until recently, it was my, um, for my best selling kids book. Um, and so I had some subsequent books um, based on it, like I had one called Mr. Hoopy Loops Meets Rex, a very clumsy boy. Uh -huh. So he's got, you know, he's got this um, big feet and he's in a glass factory. So, oh, anyway, um, danger. And, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyway, so that's part of the story. <laughs> That's wonderful. Do you sell them at Cedar Point? And <laughs> you know, I sell um, Mr. Hoopy Loops um, is being carried. That book is being carried by. I'm, this is like blows my mind and is so exciting. It's being carried by the Murano Museum in Italy, in wow. uh, in Venice, Italy. Yeah. So they bought. Mm -hmm. I I said sent them off to a number. I haven't approached Cedar Point yet, but I sent yeah. them off to a number of museums because in the in the back of all the books is a um an explanation about artists and gives uh, you know examples of research mm. of people to research and um i sent queries out to a, a number of museums and um the museum in murano italy um said hey we want to carry them um in our gift shop so How exciting i know that was a, that was a that was a nice moment when that letter <laughs> arrived and yeah, yeah. <laughs> i would say so so my next question is sort of about the feeling. So I feel like I don't even have to ask you. I mean, but I, a lot of people watching this are, you know, people who haven't written the book yet. So they're a little bit stuck in that feeling of overwhelm, maybe yeah. some frustration and that vulnerable, um, you know, that really hard part where you have to put your baby out into the world. So yeah. yeah. Similar to that or was it pretty easy? You know, I think... I can relate to that feeling a lot because I'm trying to write an adult fiction book and I have that same feeling. Like I have, I've started three of them and I just can't quite get over the hump. I mean, I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to, um, but the kids books, I had a different, almost a different mindset. Like, well, you know, this is just for my kids and it's fun. And I never really, I mean, I thought this is a gr this is great. I know it's, it's, it's going to be my legacy, but I never expected to actually turn it into a business. I thought it would be more of a fun, you know, like hobby. Um, but then as I started to get into it, I realized, wow, there's really, there's really a business here. And not only that, but I love doing this. And so, so I would say for authors out there that are getting started, don't, don't stop. I mean, don't let it stop you. I, I know. I mean, I, the, the feeling I have with the adult fiction books is, oh my God, I'm, is my writing good enough? Is it going to be good enough? Is it going to be like everybody else's? <laughs> um, and for whatever reason with kids book, books, I kind of feel like, and I think it's because there's a combination of photos or, or um, graphics and story that everything is unique. And even if it just appeals to one child out there, do it. I mean, just do it because that will be a success. Mm -hmm. um, you don't have to be the next Dr. Seuss or, you know, Dave Pilkey or, <laughs> right? You know, you can, <laughs> you can just, you know, and then, and then see what happens. T think yeah. of it like a little, like a taking the first step on a journey and you don't know where it's going to go. Awesome. Yeah. So you weren't so nervous about it beforehand. You're nervous about your adult books, but not, you weren't right. so nervous about the kids' books, but then you published them, turned it into a business, and now there's a museum in Italy yeah. carrying <laughs> your books. And yeah. how many titles do you have published? I have 14 titles published. Um, I have three series um, and a number of standalones. Yeah. Um, ironically, my, it's just, it's, once again, it's, 
one of those things that I never would have guessed, but um, I thought Mr. Mr. Hopi Loops took off in the sense of um, I had a book bub and I had a lot of downloads. <coughs> I had no inventory of any other books. So it sort of did great and then nothing. Um, although I did get a Kindle um, bonus, you know, like one of the, you know, but um, so that kind of encouraged me to continue. So I, I added some other, um, some other books. Alabama O is about a little girl um, who is a botanist and an artist. And the reason why her name is Alabama O is because I named her after Georgia O'Keefe. Mm -hmm. So I just thought of, you know, a, a nearby state. But it turns out that Alabama also means plant gatherer. So oh. it kind of all worked out. Yeah, it's, uh, it's really, it, she's darling. I, but she has not been very successful as a series, unfortunately. And I, I'm not quite sure why. Um, but then I have, um, the series, what makes, uh, what makes a, so I have what makes a bird a bird, what makes a bug a bug, uh, what makes a mammal a mammal just came yeah. out. Yeah. So, um, those are really fun because I, as a kid, I was always really interested in science and, um, it's fun to explore and, and understand things. So, um, so, but the, my best number one seller still by far is what the magic of friendship snow. And it's a story about a little girl who is lonely and doesn't know how to make friends. And she meets a magic snowman who teaches her how to, who is, becomes her friend and then teaches her how to be a friend. And um, I have it translated now into four languages other than English wow. and including Japanese, which is a challenge. <laughs> um, I speak a little bit of German and French. And so I could kind of figure it out. I mean, I had professional translators do it, but I could yeah. kind of figure out what I was doing. Like, is this on the right page? But Japanese was, uh, it's, wow. <laughs> but it's out there. So it's, <laughs> it's thanks to the Am uh, shout out to Julian at Amazon um, support because he went way above and beyond yesterday. We spent hours with me figuring it out. Oh, so, wow. Yeah, they're, they're, they, they have really good support there. Great team. And I'm wondering, I'm just thinking to myself, you know, when reviews start coming in in Japanese. I know. <laughs> you won't have any idea. So, what, well, I guess you can use that auto translator maybe. In right. No, I thought about that. I thought, you know, because my tendency with, because I've been an entrepreneur my whole life. I mean, I started having businesses when I was five or six years old, you know, yeah. starting with lemonade stands and then, you know, everything else, you know, the mowing people's lawns and taking care of things. Wow. And then, so it's really in your blood. Yeah. Oh, it totally, I love being an entrepreneur. And um, so one of the things as an entrepreneur that I do is I jump in first and ask <laughs> questions later. So this is one of those Japanese things. It's one of those situations where I have jumped in and I thought, huh, hmm, well, if everybody hates it, at least I won't know. At least I won't know. <laughs> Because, I mean, I guess there is a star rating, but, um. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that'll be a good indication. <laughs> like, okay, something's wrong. I keep getting one and two stars. That's a problem. But it was so funny because, I mean, I didn't even realize that if, because some um, of the Asian languages are read up and down. Yes. And some are read side to side. Yes. And one of the, one of the conversion tools changed it to up and down. Uh-huh. So I was like is that the way it's supposed to be or is that a mistake or yeah <laughs> it was a mistake um but it was a mistake <laughs> it was a mistake it, <laughs> japanese is read uh i think right to left and not up and down okay so, but it's like those things that you don't even and even the way they turn pages is different it's backwards pages yeah it's mm -hmm. well it's their way it's different so you're right i shouldn't say that backwards <laughs> Yeah, how so I read it's, left because they read right to left. So it, right, exactly. So it's so it's um, but see, that's one of the things I love about about this business, and it's one of the things I love about um, about being all about literacy and reading, and it's that it's a it's a constant quest mm -hmm. of learning and growing and evolving as a person, as a business person, as an artist. Um, and as a citizen of the world, as, as corny as that sounds, but, um, I mean, you've had tremendous success with your books and I was so inspired when I saw I can handle it 
and I think it was, I don't know if it was Chinese or Korean or, you know, but, you know, it was so cool to see that. And it actually is one of the things that gave me the idea. I'm like, oh my gosh, you know, um, of course you have an agent that's doing that for you, but with uh, services like Fiverr and Upwork, um, you know, it's not hard for uh, enterprising people to find their own demand. Yes, like, oh, and you are very enterprising. <laughs> Thank you. So impressive. <laughs> I, I couldn't handle it. <laughs> I couldn't handle doing that myself. Um, so that's the best thing that you've learned, you would say, is just all these sort of different aspects that have, you know, gone into... Uh, you know, I think it's, I, what I love about the business is that, and I, what I love about writing also, is that there's so many different, I hope I don't like tear up, but there's so many different aspects to it. And I love the fact like I just saw on Facebook that there is a teacher who took the magic of friendship snow. Yeah. And she read it to her class and then she created little snowballs and the kids sat around the, uh, around this mat, throwing snowballs at each other, trying to, you know, like pretending to be friends. I mean, it's yeah. just like, Oh my gosh, you know, I, I made a difference in the world of those kids that day. Yeah. It just made me feel, it, it, so that makes me feel really good. And then, you know, I get feedback saying, you know, uh, my nieces didn't understand how to make friends. They were, it was all about themselves. And then we had a conversation of, you know, because of this book and, mm -hmm. and now they, they kind of have a better idea of how to go about making friends. And so, oh, so yeah. there's that world changing aspect of it that I just yeah. love. Yeah. And then there's, and then there's the business. It, when I say business, I mean, there's the, the process of learning about other cultures, learning about how, you know, books are read in other, in what's cherished, like a, a, a sort of a weird aside. I wrote this book at Christmas time called Counting Christmas. And it was meant to be just a real basic <clears throat> book about, you know, one reindeer, two snowmen. And I used a really interesting um, uh, sort of graphics. And they, it was really, it was really fun. Yeah. And they sold in France more than anywhere else. Like the French people loved them. <laughs> and, you know, it's like, who knew? Like I sold, I think, one in the United States. And I sold 15 or 20 in France. And, and, and it was in English. Um, yeah. So I don't know if it was French, you know, families teaching their kids English or if they just love the, right. the designs or, or what. But, but that's what's cool about this is that it's, it's an it's a international business. And, you yeah. know, there's other people like, Pro, um, I think her name is Pro, Pragma Toma. Yep, Tamar. Um, yep. She has done an amazing job with her books um and really introducing people to the culture of india and mm -hmm. um and Hind and being hindu and i love that i mean i love seeing these different like it kind of brings us together oh i love that and you know love amazon or hate amazon or whatnot and we won't talk about jeff <laughs> bezos um but it's really it opens that global market for everyday people, like I am a regular everyday person, right? And, exactly. And like a regular everyday person, but here your books are selling in France, and a book you put together yourself, and you did it. Right. And, you know, you upload the files, and away they go, and they right. sell in France. Right. You know, et cetera, and, and Japan. And it, to me, like, the, the possibility, and that's why, you know, a couple years ago when I first went into this, it was just mind-blowing, the possibilities. Right. And it, you don't have to be super knowledgeable about the publishing industry and you don't need to have agents or a team or anything else just regular people yes can do it and sell all over the world exactly and and i think um the one thing i appreciate about entrepreneurs like jeff bezos and bill gates and steve jobs and is that they have made markets they have fundamentally shifted and changed the way business is done. Yeah. And and they were the first ones to conceive of the different things, right? And so Absolutely. to them, they in my view, they deserve the rewards. You know, oh, it's yeah. it's it's oh. an astronomical amount of money. But yet think about the people that they employ, think about how they, it's changed. I mean, Amazon has completely changed the way people do business and how they um um how they sell and like you said you and i as people can sell in japan 
Uh, yeah, and it's because of Amazon. The book business has completely, exactly, completely changed exactly. in the past ten years. Yeah. Well, and I think you know, traditional publishing is has such an important role, um, but there really is only so many people that can. I'm so sorry. Somebody's at our front door. I'm trying to ignore oh, it, but my know. dog is freaking out. You want me to pause? Uh, yeah. Can you pause for a yeah. second? Yeah. Thanks. Okay, so let's talk about, um, because I asked this very personal question of everybody, because I like the regular people like us to have a good idea of how it's all going to play out. So how many dollar signs have your books earned? So how long, let's tell us, I don't know if we talked about how long you've been doing this for? Um, about 18 months. Okay, and how many dollar signs about? Uh, total or per month or? Let's, um, oh, let's, per month, sure. Four dollar signs per month. Four dollar signs per month. Nice. Yeah. And yeah. is there anything? But that's you... new. That's only since been since November. Okay. November, December. December was really good for me, and November was too. November, December, um, and I've managed to keep some momentum in January. So I've been really lucky. Yeah. Um, and and very. Um, you haven't. Okay. Pause. You haven't been lucky. You work your butt off. <laughs> that is true. Let's just put that out there. You are working this as a business every day, that full is true. time. You're hustling. You are yes. churning That's books true. out. Yeah, you're. Yeah. you're not lucky. That's true. I don't want to say lucky, like oh, it just sort of happened. <laughs> I don't mean that. I mean that there are other people out there that have that are also working hard, that are also writing, mm -hmm. and I'm fortunate because I do have a marketing background, and I think that helps me a lot. Yes. Um, I also think I, because I've run businesses before, um, there, there are, um, I don't have as many hills to climb as, mm -hmm. as some other authors. On the other hand, yeah. I think there are other authors that are probably more talented. So, um, so I, th I mean, you know, it just kind of, yeah. um, like I said, I mean, I have not, I have yet to write a full length novel and there are people out there that are, do, you know, so, I mean, I love the um, children's books, and they are um, beautiful, and and all those things. A variety of them are. Mm -hmm. uh, my next mountain hill to climb is to actually finish a grown-up novel. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Good luck. And can I actually put out sixty thousand words, yeah. <laughs> or eighty thousand, or one hundred ten thousand? So those are the people that I admire. I'm like, oh my gosh, how have you written so many words? So I mean, many words that all go together in a nice. Right? <laughs> exactly. Um, have you spent your your money, <laughs> your loads of money? Have you bought anything really exciting, or is you? the money on anything really you know um, mostly it's to um pay off the investment in my business to be honest okay um but uh i was able i bought a, my husband's a tech guy too and so um i bought him a virtual reality oculus rift um uh, i think it's called oculus go and okay. so you put it on and you and it's really interesting okay. uh, cool <laughs> for christmas did you get him that yeah, I did. I got on that for Christmas, so that's been fun. Um, but I'm working towards um, when I hit a certain number, if when I hit five dollar signs every month, I am going to buy a horse. So that's my big, yeah, that's my big thing. So we have we have property for horses, but we don't have any horses on it yet. They're kind of pricey. But when I hit mm -hmm. five figures, that's what I'm working towards. Is to um, is oh, I love that. Horse. Yeah. Oh, good for you. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah. Exciting. Send me a picture of your horse. I will. Yeah. I will. Yes. <laughs> Once it starts, right? Once the momentum starts. It's, yeah. Yeah. You're yeah. good. Okay. Any last thoughts that you want to leave us with? Any last piece of advice for new um, writers or your biggest aha moment along the way? Um, I think, you know, a, a lot of people have said this, whether it's Austin McLean or Dawson or Mark Dawson or a number of others just keep writing mm -hmm. and keep writing and keep writing and keep writing because magic of friendship snow I put it out last April and it, there were crickets like I had no reviews I had no sales nothing and then I was really um blessed or if you want to call it that or, or um book bub picked it up and it took off from there and um and and can i remember thinking to myself this is a great book <laughs> why are people buying it you know it's so sweet 
like, oh, well, on to the next one. Yeah. Um, and now it's my bestseller. So you just never know. Mm -hmm. um, and, and so just keep writing, especially, and I would say the other aha thing is write what's in your heart. Because if you write what's in your heart, your heart will connect with other people's hearts. Mm -hmm. And when hearts open, not only can you make a difference, but you can also um, make some money. <laughs> oh, I love it. Thank you. Thank you so much for chatting with me today. You're welcome. Thank you for having me. I oh, really appreciate it. Oh, good. Okay, I'll talk to you soon when you get your horse. <laughs> <laughs> Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. You've been listening to the Writer's Way podcast. For show notes, links to guests' information, and to learn more about the Writer's Way, check out loririder.com. Until next week, enjoy this chapter of your life.